The International Classification of Diseases is an international health information standard for recording diseases, injuries, external causes of illness and death, patient safety events, primary care, traditional medicine and other, many other components that are relevant for reporting and recording the health of a population. ICD is part of a family of classification, the WHO family of international classifications, that comprises as core classifications besides the ICD, also a classification on functioning, disability and health, and a classification on health interventions. There is a set of special classifications called derived and related classifications that cover special aspects like oncology or drugs or other domains in health. ICD is a global standard that has been implemented in about 110 countries that account for 60% of the world's population for counting deaths, for counting illness of a population in order to monitor health, to allocate resources. And while I'm saying allocating resources, be aware that 70% of the world health resources are allocated based on ICD coded data uh, in order to plan health, in order to refund for administrative purposes for patient safety events. So ICD matters to everybody, directly or indirectly, because it serves to standardize also the way uh, mm, diseases are diagnosed. And this means that research can compile data from different sources and can improve the knowledge and understanding of diseases and their treatment. And as such, it will influence everybody's health. ICD-11 is different from previous versions because it's built on an electronic infrastructure, it has increased user support, it has been a fully transparent, publicly accessible process while it was being designed and it will be so during the ongoing maintenance of ICD in the future. ICD is uh, different from a scientific point of view. It has been updated extensively. It now includes a section on traditional medicine. It has improved codability of HIV. It has a new structure for antimicrobial resistance and uh, many other aspects similar to this, just to give a few examples. ICD has, thanks to its electronic infrastructure, a very much simplified coding interface, so training will be much, much easier than in the past. And as I said again, the open proposal mechanism will allow to access ICD much easier than in the past. Now, I was talking about the human coding interface, but the novelty is also the computer or software interface that comes with the ICD that can be used online or offline, so you can use on web services, we call it or application programming interface so you can connect it to any software of your liking and enjoy the same features of ICD. The electronic infrastructure also enables us to have a translation platform for the first time in ICD's history. This means any translation can then take advantage of the same features that we are at the moment showing just for the English version, although some translations are, are making big progress now. ICD-11 may have a longer shelf life than previous versions because from its inherent infrastructure it is designed to be updated at regular intervals. So we foresee that updates that have no statistical impact, that improve user guidance, can do be done on an annual basis. So in, updates that have slight impact on statistics may be done at five yearly rates and updates that have big impact on statistics, core statistics I'm talking about, uh, may be done at 10 yearly rates like changes to the rules that will really create big shifts in statistics. This version is released a year ahead of the assembly next year uh, so that countries have the opportunity to prepare for the implementation. Implementation requires accurate planning, uh, assessment of what changes need to be done in system, uh, training of staff, uh, adaptation of IT systems, eventually even changes to legislation. This takes time. Having this version early enough will allow people to prepare and to understand the classification, prepare for the translations and get ready by the time it's adopted. 
One should not be scared of this, also I'm saying a lot of details that are necessary, because uh, after adoption usually there's a lag time of three years that country can start implementation, and we are well aware that implementation in low and middle income countries may be easier due to the infrastructure than in other countries that have a highly complex integrated health information system. So between now and May uh, 2019, we will be uh, working on the classification to improve the user guidance, to improve some of the additional access, but of course the coding structure will be stable. And this enables the future users, the countries, to really prepare for their implementation. Uh, we will have put in place uh, an updating process so we can handle proposals that are coming in in the meantime. And then we will submit a summary report to the executive board of WHO in January 2019 for then being processed by the World Health Assembly in May 2019.